Hello, good morning, good evening, and welcome to Big World Cinema. Without further ado, we'll continue with what you're here for. And to ensure this channel survives, please don't skip the ads. Thank you. I read this question a lot on Facebook, and I don't spend much time on Facebook, but every time I look, another person has posted the same question with commenters putting in their dollars worth with where they live whilst others are saying I'm not telling you this place is perfect and I don't need it to be overrun with annoying expats thanks very much I've spent over three years living in the Philippines have visited the majority of major cities plus a handful of smaller islands and beach areas so I've built up a pretty good picture of what different places offer. Whichever place I visited in the Philippines, I'd always think, could I live here? And whether the place fulfills all my requirements, such as alfresco bars, diners, parks, open spaces. Is it safe, easily walkable, not too polluted, dirty or busy with traffic? Is there an airport close? How is the public transportation? Are there condos on offer at around $300 per calendar month that come with a pool and decent gym? The proximity to a good beach that doesn't consist of volcanic black sand. Firstly, you need to decide whether you're a city or provincial person. Whilst researching online, you'll hear the same ideal places to live mentioned over and over again, such as Davao, Iloilo, Dumaguete, Cebu and Metro Manila. I grew up in Essex in a small town on the outskirts of London, with the east coast only 25 miles away. In my early 30s, I moved to live and work in London, where I stayed for 17 years. I'm a city boy, so I love big cities, but I also love beaches and being close to the sea. In my last 10 years living in the UK, I lived in Brighton, in a city close to the sea. Brighton was the perfect spot. It had the best of both worlds. It's not a large city, but has everything you need. Great pubs, bars, restaurants, shops, and lots of countryside nearby. The only way Brighton fell short, in my mind, was art spaces. Sure, there's a thriving art scene with regular exhibitions, but no large art galleries or museums. But with London less than an hour away, I'd make regular trips up to the city to satisfy that craving. Unless you don't already know, I'm a fussy bugger. My cup is always half empty and I'm always searching for something that isn't there. Which is probably why I'm still single. But please stay tuned to the end of the video where I summarise and reveal the best place to settle in the Philippines if I only had one choice which most of you probably won't believe anyway. <laughs> Prior to heading to the Philippines for the first time, I decided to head to Cebu City rather than Manila as a softer landing, so to speak. Due to the pandemic, I ended up living in Cebu for two years and eight months. Cebu City has a lot to offer. It's not far from the international airport, there are great condos, a variety of malls, shops, bars, restaurants, nightlife. There's a couple of parks, lots of historical sites. I loved living in Cebu City. Lived pretty central in Mabolo, in a condo that was walking distance to business park and IT park. It was a two minute walk to the main road and many a morning I'd be swimming in the outdoor pool on the 17th floor and couldn't hear a sound. Sure, that silence was often broken by a sudden cacophony of dogs and roosters, but I didn't feel like I was living in the centre of a busy city. 
I'd walk around Cebu for hours. You can easily walk around the city in a day. But for me, I found that it lacked variety and not enough to keep me there permanently. There are small exhibition space, but no large art galleries or museums, which a large city should have really. It also lacks our fresco spaces. Sure, the terraces at Ayala have places you can sit outside, but if you want to go and sit somewhere and chill for a few hours, I was always returning to Plaza Independencia, which I considered the only real option. One of the perks of living in Cebu City, however, is that if you ride for half an hour up to the hills, you can visit the gardens around Surau, where there's also restaurants and a great views of Cebu City down below. You also don't have to travel very far from Cebu City to get to a good beach. Within three hours you could be in Walbwal, Bantayan, Camotes or Malapascua. Although you'll often find yourself stuck in traffic for that first hour, as traffic within Cebu City is pretty horrendous. I love India have visited the country many times, so I find the large island of Mindanao with its diverse blend of cultures particularly appealing. How are you? Welcome to Cagayan, the Aura City. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Cagayan de Oro is the first class, highly urbanized city in the region of northern Mindanao. It is the capital of the province of Misamis Oriental. It is a vibrant multicultural city with over 50 mosques dotted around the city. Hello, how are you? I love cities. Are you good? I walk each day for hours pounding the streets. I find much more life to see on the streets than a hike up a mountainside. Even if I'm not taking photographs or shooting video, I still like the energy and interest that a city provides. I stayed in Cagayan de Oro for just over a week. It's got vibrant street life with a number of malls and condos near to each other and everything you need within a close proximity. It's not a large city and pretty easy to navigate. I'd happily return to CDO to spend more time. Divao is a safe but spread out city. When I read online about why expats choose places to live in the Philippines, a, a number of them state that that particular place has good shopping malls. A lot of foreign expats live in Davao. All major cities in the world have shopping malls. When you're walking around the mall, you could be in any city in the world. What's so special about shopping malls? And why do Filipinos spend so much time in them? I spent two weeks in Davao over Christmas. Stayed in a lovely Airbnb with a breathtaking view over Samal Island. There were a handful of expats living in the same condo building who gathered at the pool each day. The pool was great and the complex also had an okay gym. If the condo I'd been airbnb in had become permanently available, I'd have jumped at it. But should you decide to live in a place entirely on your living arrangements? This is how I also felt about Cebu at the end of my stay there. I loved my condo in Cebu, and if I didn't like it so much, I'd probably have left the city much sooner, as there wasn't enough to keep me there. Same with Davao, I don't think it offers that much. Although it does have beaches just outside the city, including Samal Island nearby, so maybe it is worth further exploration. Iloilo is often mentioned as a fast-growing modern city. 
It has a lovely vibe. I stayed for a week downtown in city proper. I'm staying in Elo Elo proper. That's the actual name, not the nickname. That's proper Elo Elo, that is. So it's a good area, close to eateries and malls. I don't really know the benefit of staying close to Robinson's Mall, but at least it has a food court. This is probably the best part of the city to stay anyway. I prefer staying downtown, in the heart of the city, where the action is. Elo Elo is quite spread out, but I was close to the... Shut up, dog. <laughs> But I was close to the river and would often walk to the wonderful Riverside Walk, which runs alongside the river, strangely enough. There's also some other quaint spots to visit in Ilo Ilo, such as Molo and Megaworld. But for me, I found these places of interest were too spread out, too far apart, and Ilo Ilo lacking a city centre as such. The people are friendly and as a foreigner away from the major cities you're going to get a good reception with fewer foreigners living there. Which was also the case in Cagayan de Oro and Davao. And also Bacolod where I stayed for a couple of days. I was staying downtown near to SM City and a boardwalk beside the sea if you can call it that. It was really just a wall where teenagers hung out after school with a couple of eateries. Bacola too has a nice vibe, although I don't know whether it offers that much that I would choose to live there. There are however some great attractions to explore outside the city, such as Soleil City and the ruins. To me, the appeal in living in either Ilo Ilo or Bukolod is the proximity to Boracay, which I'll discuss later. Dumaguete has been a place I've yearned to visit ever since I started researching the Philippines. In fact, it was vlogger Rike who first put the Philippines on my radar. I'd watch videos from Rike and Gio set on the boardwalk. So I've been wanting to come to Dumaguete to see what the big fuss was about. Everybody raved about the city, saying it's the city of gentle people. The best place in the Philippines for expats to live. I was excited when I was on the ferry from Bohol, finally on my way here. As soon as I stepped off the ferry at the port, the sun was shining. It was a beautiful morning. As I walked along the boardwalk, I thought, what a fantastic location this is. Wow, the traffic was fierce and congested. Crossing the road was difficult. And I've lived in Cebu City. I know what busy traffic is like. Downtown Dumaguete is not very big. You can virtually circle the city within an hour. The main street has all the stores, plus a large market. The surrounding streets are dirty. What's the big deal with Dumaguete, I thought? Why are you living here? How long does it take to judge a place before you decide you want to live there? My first impressions of Dumaguete Dumaguete. My first impressions of Dumaguete weren't great. I'd often rock up in cities and beaches and immediately think, yeah, and... But you can't judge a place within a couple of hours or days of being there, can you? I read one Facebook post where a guy had leased a property in Dumaguete, but as soon as he arrived here, he hated it and realised he'd made the wrong decision. Jesus, you can't decide on living in a place just by watching YouTube videos, can you? Unless they're mine, of course. I stayed in the city a fortnight. Although it's hardly a city, really, it's more like a town which you can walk around in an hour. 
with little of interest to get your juices flowing. I really didn't get Dumaguete's appeal. I just found it dirty and congested. A lot of expats live outside the city in Valencia and Darwin, which I also didn't get. There just didn't seem much here and much going on and much variety, so I couldn't understand the appeal. Sure, Dumaguete has a fabulous boardwalk, and if I was living there, I'd sign up to do a course at the wonderful Silman University, which is located in a beautiful campus. But that's about it. Dumaguete is probably the only city I visited that I would never want to live. Bohol is a joy. I spent almost a month there. Although like Dumaguete, Tagbalaran city doesn't really offer a lot. The people are great. Sure, the people are great everywhere in the Philippines, but I found Boholians to be particularly welcoming. One of the attractions of Bohol is staying on Pang Lao Island. Pang Lao has some of the finest beaches in the Philippines. White sandy beaches with an assortment of beachside bars and restaurants where I can enjoy a sundowner, write my journal, read my book and people watch. Alona Beach was the first beach I found in the Philippines that ticked off that desire. I told you I'm a fussy bugger. It's a lovely beach and popular with tourists, so it's also overcrowded with annoying touts wanting to sell you island hopping tours 24-7, which after a week sent me packing. Not being a scooter driver, Panglao Island also felt too remote. Even though Alona Beach is only 20 kilometers from Tagbalaran city, when the sun goes down and darkness kicks in, it feels isolated and doesn't offer you much options. At least if you're living in a city, you have the option of being able to walk the streets after dark or walk around the mall. Panglao Island just reminded me of small islands that shut down at sunset. So I moved into the city to spend 10 nights in Tagbalaran. There's a lovely wharf close to the port, which is a nice spot for a sundowner, where I frequented a few times. But apart from a couple of malls, there's no real beach scene, nightlife or places to chill outside. Which is a shame, with its proximity to great beaches on Pang Lao. If Tagbalaran had more to offer, I'd move there in a flash. And so to Boracay. Finding a few bars along the coastline of Alona Beach is nothing in comparison to the number of bars that stretch the length of White Beach on Boracay. Whatever beach I stay at, I use Goa in India as a yardstick. I once spent 10 weeks in a Gonda beach over Christmas. As I said, I'm a city boy, so this was quite an undertaking, as a Gonda is just a small village, really. But Boracay is of similar appeal, and I loved it. No, it hasn't got as much as a city offers, but it has a variety of bars, restaurants and shops located in one small area that can keep you entertained. I stayed for a week and definitely plan to return there for a longer stay. Here at BWC, Uncle doesn't charge a subscription fee like Auntie does, but buying us a coffee would be much appreciated. Thank you. Before I arrived in Manila, I hadn't found the perfect place to live. No shit, Sherlock, I hear you cry. 
viewers advised me that if I wanted our fresco bars, cafes and diners, I'd find them in Makati or BGC. So yeah, there's plenty on offer here. I've lived in Manila almost three months now. I'm nowhere near discovering everything that the capital city has to offer. I haven't really ventured too far as yet, explored mostly around the area I'm staying. But I chose that wisely. I'm 10 minutes walk from BGC and a 10 minute drive from Makati. So I've got almost everything I need on my doorstep. Yes, the traffic is frustrating. It took me an hour to get to Intramuros, the old part of Manila, at the weekend. But it's not as if I'm battling with the traffic every day. In the time I've been here, I know already I prefer Manila to Cebu. It's got so much more to offer me. All it lacks is access to a decent beach. But like Cebu, I just need to travel for a few hours outside the city. So there you have it. If I were new to the country and considering where to make my permanent home, I'd book an Airbnb or hotel and spend a couple of weeks in each location to get a feel for the place. If I could take something from each of the places I've visited in the Philippines and create my own destination, I'd be closer to finding the perfect location. But there's still places on Luzon I need to visit, such as Batangas and La Union. People recommend Baguio, but that's too cold for me, so I couldn't live there. So maybe I'd settle here and use Boracay as a place I'd escape to every so often. I'd also like to check out Palawan as an alternative to Boracay. And maybe viewers watching may have some suggestions of their own as the ideal location. So I can come and vlog there and ruin your retirement. <laughs> Just a quick reminder to please click the thumbs up button if you liked the video or thumbs down button if you didn't, obviously. Thank you.
If you liked the video, please could you like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to ding the notification bell to see my videos before your friends. See you on the next video. Take care, everyone.